All right, guys, welcome to part three in our five part uh, full scale battle reenactment of the Battle of Sekigahara. Uh, we are resuming what we saw in the last section of the fight. What's going on is the Eastern Army is sending in a second wave of assaults against the Toyotomi Health Center. Now, instead of going for the full four pieces like we saw uh, in the previous hour, they're going to go for the northern half of those four pieces. So what we're going back to is the north center, and then uh, the next section we'll see the, uh, the kind of northernmost of those four pieces that we saw in the last hour. But what the Toyotomi have that the Tokugawa were not planning for is a massive horde of reinforcements they're throwing into the battle to try to maintain this center at all possible costs. So we're seeing a force of, uh, if I check my notes here, uh, almost like, I, gotta, I think it's like 14,000 troops here. Uh, what we saw in the last the last hour was almost 14,000 troops for the Toyotomi. Uh, now you can kind of cut that in half, and that's what we're going to see for the first 30 minutes of this hour's worth of the fight. I'm going to raise the volume for you guys just a little bit. Um, but we're seeing an additional nearly 4,000 on top of that of who survived the last section, the last hours of the fighting. So what you're seeing is just a massive number of Toyotomi troops. The Tokugawa not prepared to face this many reinforced positions of the Toyotomi. So they are bringing in only about, uh, I believe, maybe 8,000 total uh, with the remains of the last hours of the fight as well. Uh, but nowhere near the strength that they need to punch through the Toyotomi center here on the north half of the Toyotomi Center. Uh, but nevertheless, they are going to try. Uh, definitely going to try. Their archers moving forward. Now, I've positioned the Toyotomi forces. A little bit of a ridge position here. Our uh, Yari Samurai getting in a nice position to hold this little uh, ridge top. Not much of a big ridge, but it is something. Like a little creek bed there. Now, what's happening right now elsewhere on the battlefield is uh, really fascinating, actually. So there's, you know, obviously it's not like a Western uh, versus Eastern Civil War kind of like formalized uh, battle lines drawn. What's happening during this period of Japan is alliances are being broken left and right, you know. And so one of these forces is a group that claimed loyalty to the Toyotomi-led Western Army position on the far south of the line, south of where we saw action in our first hour's worth of the day's battle. But in secret, they pledged allegiance to the Eastern Army under the Tokugawa. But they still formed that position as if to uh, align themselves still in battle with the Toyotomi. And that's because, from the conception, that particular shogunate was dedicated to whoever was going to win this battle. And because the numbers were so close, and the action so close uh, in the first couple hours of the battle, it was kind of confusing as to who might win this fight. So they were yet... Uh, uncommitted to either side, uh, particularly uncommitted to joining the Tokugawa should the Tokugawa look like they might actually lose the battle. So what Tokugawa Ieyasu does is he sends in a group of archivers, so those are your, your old school Dutch uh, imported firearms uh, a group of soldiers armed with those Dutch archibures to go 
just kind of fire some warning shots on those troops south of the um, Toyotoli positions to force them into committing to their promise to support the Tokugawa and uh, stab their Toyotomi allies in the back, so to say. And, uh, and so that's what's happening far south of where we are right now, is those warning shots to those troops that, hey, like you promised us you would uh, turn on your Toyotomi allies, and we're going to make sure you do. So really cool aspect of the battle happening elsewhere on the battlefield, but we are starting to see Tokugawa launching their assaults on our position here. Now they do still have a significant number of troops, so I'm not just throwing away my forces. They have sent in a patch into this uh, little bamboo forest here as well. We're trying to do battle with these guys. It's like this guy's strangling the other guy. Oh, brutal. Just brutal. With a spear. So that's what's happening on our right flank right now. Over in the center, we're feeding more troops. It was, looks like we're charging cavalry in as well. Over on the right, battling with more of the Tokugawa forces. Fortunately, we have the number of troops necessary for making sure the Tokugawa don't flick around us on either side. It looks like there's a huge break happening in the Tokugawa center, I believe. Or maybe that's just the, the wavering. But we are sending cavalry into this little bit of a gap. And the Tokugawa line here. We're going to try to break this section and try to take out some of the Tokugawa uh, Boashigaru back there, trying to support the boys up at the front lines. We've got some of our own uh, Boashigaru up here as well. Looks like a stray archer. Uh, getting bold, getting up close so he can get some shots off. Oh man, I think that guy got taken out by uh, an arrow, maybe. Or a few arrows. For the battle rage, as you can see from the perspective of our archers as they support our boys up at the front line. I've got the uh, cavalry over here waiting, prepared to move in should they get the call to charge in and start running down some of these routing Tokugawa forces once they break, if they break. If we manage to hold our center. Nice shot of the action as the autumn leaves float across the screen. I love it. Oh, we've got some uh, riderless horses running. Got some arrows coming in from the Boa Shigaru across the ridge there. This is a good angle because you can see a really good section of the line right here as my troops break the Tokugawa left and start to fold in on this flank because honestly my center is not doing great even though, you know, obviously we've got a lot of troops but uh, we are starting to capture the Tokugawa left flank and that's going to allow us to just roll troops down, move into the center and... Uh, maintain our position. We're moving more cavalry into the center and trying to hold our line just long enough 
because we do have uh, Yari Samurai falling back. But there is a big break on the Tokugawa right center. And we're sending cavalry in quickly, trying to silence some of these Boashigaru just long enough that we can, uh, you know, break the rest of the Tokugawa center. It looks like these uh, Boashigaru are wavering. Also, we're getting huge breaks in the Tokugawa left flank over here on my right. More cavalry of mine charging. That was no doubt uh, a big reason for the success on our right flank. The cavalry support just at the right moment. Horsemen charging through the routing. Tokugawa infantry as they break. Our infantry, though, have a different direction of their target. We need to make sure we don't lose our center. Uh, but that is going to be a huge break for the Tokugawa center now. Trying to stem the tide with some Boashigaru. They pulled back to this little hilltop. Get some last-minute shots off from their bows. Uh, but uh, it looks like the Tokugawa are going to have to concede... At least a temporary defeat over at their center, because we are breaking these guys. We're going to charge them down as well. Try to take as many of them out as we can before we need to reform in the event of a possible another attack, another wave from the Tokugawa. Boashigaru firing bows, shooting, loosing bows, unleashing arrows, I should say, uh, into the routing Tokugawa infantry. So try to get away. I've got cavalry rode in the back here, running troops down. Nice bird's eye view. A little bit less lag when we kind of scale it back a bit. Uh, but you guys can kind of see what's happening. The cavalry just running troops down. I'm, I am repositioning my infantry as well as the uh, Ashigaru. Well, I mean, I guess Ashigaru does translate to infantry, doesn't foot soldier. Uh, but the, the missile troops are Bo Ashigaru. Going to reposition soon as well. Get a little bit closer. Try to get some... Uh, last minute shots off on some of the routing Tokugawa foot soldiers infantry as they uh, withdraw. Cavalry just running troops down like a flock of birds. But we are going to go ahead and end this section of the fight here and move on over to the north end of this uh, sector. So, uh, like I said, we're still basically the exact same positions we saw in the last hour's worth of the fight. So, uh, this section of the battlefield was the last quarter of the hour worth of the fight in our last hour, our last video. So we're back to that section, but just like before, we're kind of just dividing uh, the forces in uh, in equal fractions here. So you're going to see uh, pretty much the exact same events that we saw in the last 15-minute uh, section of the battlefield. So we're going to go ahead and move our troops forward, take up positions on the strategic ridge, move our Archers into position to help support those defensive positions and uh, hopefully see some really awesome samurai fighting going on here.
So I believe when we did our uh, Battle of Marathon, I talked about some of the like weaponry and the fighting styles of the uh, Greek coalition forces, predominantly Athenian. Uh, and I think we talked about... Uh, I don't remember if we talked about this, but I, th- I believe I, I mentioned uh, Pancration, which was uh, sort of the, the MMA, the mixed martial art of ancient Greece combining boxing and wrestling as a military fighting style should a soldier ever uh, lose their weaponry in battle need to defend themselves with hand-to-hand combat. Well, you see something very similar in Japan as well with jiu-jitsu. So jiu-jitsu also very much a, a kind of grapple style martial art, uh, but jiu-jitsu really developed as a hand-to-hand combat style based on uh, warriors on the battlefield trying to train them for what to do if they ever uh, found themselves without any weapon. Uh, By the way, we've got some cavalry charging our line, just kind of starting off the battle over on our left, but our Yari Samurai are doing a good job of throwing them back. So I'm going to send in my own cavalry for a little bit of a counterattack, try to get revenge, make sure they don't fall back and get uh, get into the habit of doing hit and run tactics on our boys. Uh, by the way, if you guys are uh, marathoning it all, all in one sitting, be sure to hit that pause button, get your snacks and drinks up. Uh, but also, the, the martial arts of Japan weren't just isolated to uh, hand-to-hand combat. They also had a martial art uh, called Kendo, which was developed to train uh, warriors on how to use the several different, uh, I believe, swords specifically of Japanese uh, soldiers. And uh, Kendo, I'm, I'm a fencer. So I love uh, other like mar- uh, sword-based martial arts, and kendo is a really cool one. Uh, I've seen demonstrations of it in person, and I think it's just one of those really neat uh, martial arts to watch. If you get the chance, maybe I'll post like a kendo video in here or something. Uh, but really cool, really fascinating. And by the way, when it came to the Japanese, um, there was there was uh, there was more than just the the katana. By the way, so the katana was a two-handed sword, uh, but there were also other types of swords in uh, Japanese uh, history. Here we go, we're getting the uh, Tokugawa forces. The unit launched their assault. They've got uh, Boa, Shigaru firing some flaming arrows, trying to soften up my center before they charge in through this uh, little dip, this little uh, bowl here. Little divot in the ground. So the different types of Japanese swords, the Chokuro, the Tsurugi, the Tachi, the Todachi, the Udachi, uh, the Katana, the Katate Uchi, the Waki Zashi, and the Namaki. So it wasn't just Katana. Uh, now, by the way, I probably pronounced all of those wrong, so feel free if you guys speak fluent Japanese, let me know in the comments below in phonetics how to pronounce those swords. Uh, like I said, I'm a fencer, so I'm a, a huge geek for cool, like, historical swords. Um, so if you guys ever want to buy me one, give it to me as a present. Feel free. You know, 
I don't have any of, of Japanese swords. I've got a cool, um, I've got two Greek, ancient Greek swords. I've got, uh, I think I showed you guys uh, one when we were working on the uh, marathon battle. The Xyphos sword. Uh, but I also have a Copus, which was an ancient Greek cavalry sword. And then uh, I have a, like a super rusted out, but I've got an old, like, uh, a dueling sword, my aunt got me, my aunt, who's a big, like, uh, collector, uh, like an antiques collector, she got it for me, I think it's either Christmas or a birthday present, but really cool, I want to get, I want to try to, like, uh, get in there and, and de-rust it so it looks really nice, because I think it can be restored, it's not, like, got holes in it or anything, uh, but I digress, I digress, I'm getting off topic here. Tokugawa sending cavalry into the center to try to break our spirits before their flanks fall apart. Because we are seeing their left and right starting to waver out there. I'm sending cavalry into the uh, sort of left center of this fight. Because we do have a, a break in our own positions, a little gap here that um, Tokugawa trying to take advantage of. Sending cavalry and trying to plug that gap. Looks like they may be pulling their general out of the fight. Maybe just moving in to give some more, uh, moral support to his boys. called Yari Samurai that we're seeing here is because Yari was the Japanese uh, sort of bladed spear. So it's a spear with a, very similar to like the English bill. So it's a spear that's got a very long, thin uh, spear tip. And you can kind of see these in this game. It's really long, uh, thin, uh, Sort of blade at the end of the spear. Uh, I'm not sure the exact dimensions of the length, but I, from pictures I'm seeing, it looks like somewhere uh, between like 9 to 15, uh, 15 to 21 feet apparently. I'm looking at the specs on this right now. So, really cool. Looks like we're starting to see some breaks in the Tokugawa line again on their left. On their left, it looks like they're falling apart a bit. Now their uh, Boashigaru doing a good job of trying to hold us back, but it looks like their right flank has folded and is shattered. And we're moving cavalry and charging, trying to take out those Boashigaru. The uh, bow that uh, these guys would be using, by the way, is called a Yumi. It's a really cool style bow where the bottom, uh, like the part of the bow below the grip is shorter than the part of the bow above the grip because it was developed for cavalry. So if we take a look over here at our bow Ashigaru, uh, so this bow was developed to be used on horseback. So you would need to be able to have a bow that you could move from one side of the horse to the other. So the bottom part was built to be shorter than the top part. And as a result, the way you kind of like draw the bow is a little bit uh, different from what you might expect from a European style bow, uh, like a long bow. Because you have to like 
there's a technique to it, but you have to kind of like, instead of just plugging it into the knock, like you would when you usually knock an arrow, you have to like put it at the bottom and then slowly draw it up the up the bowstring until it gets into the knot. Really cool. Uh, really awesome. I'm a huge uh, archery guy, too. I grew up doing a lot of archery, so I love uh, bows. So if you want to give me a Yumi bow, also, you are more than welcome to buy me one. Uh, the arrows, by the way, called the Ya. Uh, ya is the arrows that were used in the Yumi bow. But huge break in the Tokugawa uh, center here, and we're sending cavalry to go chase a lot of these guys down. Boa Shigaru getting some shots off of the road in Tokugawa, uh, but that's going to do it for the center. Uh, however, that's not the end of this hour's little fight. Looks like we've got some shattered. Uh, Tokugawa just confused where they should go. The cavalry roaming around, they probably realize we, uh, we are... We need to desperately find a way out of this mess. But well, we are gonna go ahead and move on over to the final section of this hour's worth of the fight. Uh, which is gonna be just north of where we are right now. Um, the first action on this sector of the battlefield. Um, so in the south, in that first hour's worth of the fight, we saw fighting in and around a series of uh, small rivers or creeks. And we're going to see the same thing on this north end. Um, the majority of the Toyotomi forces were sandwiched between sort of like two rivers and you can think about like two creeks in between those rivers well we are rested up against the north creek here and what we're going to be seeing is the Toyotomi forces trying to counterattack desperately to stall a Tokugawa advance now we've got uh here at you can think of this as like the north center or almost like the south end of the north third of the battlefield. Uh, so what we're going to see from the Toyotomi is a very small number of troops, only about 2,500, that are finding themselves in a position where they need to repel a Tokugawa assault force of about twice their size. Uh, now, they told the guy we're going to come at us in two phases. First phase being about two-thirds of that number, but that two-thirds number is still going to be larger than our own army's size. So we're going to try to take the fight to them. And what you're seeing here, uh, this little creek here is kind of the creek that is on the battlefield. I found a really nice map on this game that I think matches the the section of where this part of the battlefield would have taken place really well. Uh, so shout out to uh, the Creative Assembly team and everyone working on this game for the awesome maps you guys put together. By the way, this is your daily reminder. Drink some water as I uh, get some out of my canteen here. So you can see our troops moving forward, getting into position out there. Now this is going to be the last section of the battlefield because, uh, spoiler alert, I get wrecked here as the Toyotomi, uh, which is also historically accurate, while the uh, to Toyotomi were doing well holding their center and south. I, the Toyotomi right would be on the south. Uh, the Tokugawa managed to finally start making a breakthrough on the north end of the battlefield. Uh, the Tokugawa right, Toyotomi left. And, uh, and this is where the troops, like we talked about at the beginning of this hour's worth of fight, uh, the troops that were started off loyal to the Toyotomi but had secretly agreed to work with the Tokugawa, they are now finally mobilizing 
honoring their pledge to the Tokugawa and preparing for an assault on the Toyotomi right flank down to the far south. Uh, so that's what we're going to see in the next hour of the fighting. But in these final moments here, we're going to see the Tokugawa finally make a serious victory on the north end uh, without any like major struggles or reinforcements because the Toyotomi are running out of troops to throw into this fight. They funneled most of their troops into the south and center, and they don't have a lot of troops left in the north to hold together the wall. Uh, hence the small numbers for their troops on this section of the battlefield. As you can see, we don't even have enough troops to hold our position uh, in a single file line with our uh, line infantry units here, the uh, Yari Samurai. Nasa Force, flaming arrows coming in from the Tokugawa. It looks like their infantry are charging forward over on our right. They've got some troops coming up on the flank, and I have to feed cavalry in to try to intercept them. Now my own troops are starting to fire flaming arrows as well. Over on the left, we're also sending cavalry in to try to intercept uh, if you can see this, some of the Tokugawa cavalry starting to move in on our uh, left flank here. Point of view of our archers as our infantry charge forward, knowing they cannot hold this position, they're going to bravely charge in and just try to stall the Tokugawa advance as long as possible, give my Boa Shigaru opportunity to get some shots off. I think we could get a little bit better view from this unit here. Firing with flaming arrows. Then we've got more Tokugawa forces on the other side of this bridge moving up. But I am desperate to hold this sector. I kind of... I, there were some Tokugawa starting to waver down here, and I thought if I just fed the rest of my troops into this sector, we routed them, we could make some serious, uh, you know, advances against, uh, you know, obviously we can't break this section of the army, but we could make some serious breaks in the enemy position. We even broke some of their uh, infantry there, as you can see. So I thought maybe, just maybe, but... Tokugawa firing flaming arrows into their own troops to hold this position. Here's the shade of these trees, but uh, there's not a lot of hope. We are, I mean, they are wavering. Like, it's not. It's not impossible to get some of these troops to run. But we just have so many odds stacked against us. Uh, sending in troops, trying to intercept this group of Yari Samurai crossing by the bridge here. Tokugawa feeding more forces into this section of the fight now, and any hope we had of breaking this section is now gone. Our right half of the army just dwindling, uh, ready to break at any moment. Honestly, even though it says it's steady, uh, these guys are going to break pretty soon. 
We just don't have what we need to hold the section of the battlefield together. Our archers continuing to fire heroically, or I guess I, I should say unleash heroically their arrows into the Tokugawa forces, but it's just too few soldiers here to hold this position. In desperation, I sent the commander from the uh, this section of the fight into the battle at the center here. You can see his horsemen out there. Getting hit by those Boashigaru. This guy goes down multiple arrows in his gut. Looks like he may have took one to the thigh also. Now this section of the battlefield is where we have the most, but oh man, these guys are just getting destroyed. Getting surrounded, isolated, formation broken. Got some troops trying to hold back soldiers over here. Our cavalry broken that tried to fend off that group of... Um, Enemy cavalry coming up on our left. Feeding the Yari uh, Samurai, or the uh, Boa Shigaru, sorry, into the fight just to try to stall them as long as possible. But so this sector of the battlefield looks like it's going to be lost for the Tony Tony. Huge loss, huge win for the Tokugawa. Uh, what else is a huge win? Is your patronage on Patreon. Uh, if you guys are interested, there is a link to my Patreon in the comments or in the video description below. You can sign up for, for more than several really awesome tier benefits. Oh, that guy got a blade right in the back. But uh, the success there is only temporary. Our right has shattered. Our center's about to break. We've got Boashigaru now in retreat. And uh, pretty soon here, we are going to see the last of them break here. And there they go. Huge break for the Toyotomi. Tokugawa now finally have their first advantage of the entire day's worth of the fighting here near the end of the third hour of the battle. And some of our troops try to boldly fight to get an opportunity to get off the battlefield here. But that's going to do it for this hour's worth of the fight, guys. Uh, if you guys liked this section, go ahead and hit the like button. Otherwise, I will see you on the next section of the battlefield.